the reason why I'm proud to be Hmong is because for a large part of my childhood and teenage years, I was very ashamed of who I was, uh, mainly because people didn't know who Hmong people were. Um, they would say, oh, you're, Mon you're Mongolian? And, uh, or, oh, you look Hawaiian, are you Hawaiian? And I'm just like, no, I'm Hmong. Uh, and I got to tell them the whole story. And oftentimes they, they don't have time to hear the whole story. And so for, for a while, I was really ashamed of who I was. Even just my music, the music that we would listen to, my different aspects of my culture. You know, our food has unique smells and whatnot. And so people would tease me about it in school. Um, but now that, I'm, you know, I was older, especially when I went through undergrad um, for college, um, really learned to accept me for who I am, enjoy and embrace my, all the identities that I have, especially being Hmong. Uh, makes me very special being Hmong because of our, our story and the things that we have to overcome to, be, to get to the US, United States and also to, to not just survive but thrive in the United States. And so um, I'm very uh, proud to be Hmong because of that legacy that has been um, paved for, for me and for many others. And I'm also proud because I, you know, paving my own path for other people, especially in athletics, um, coaching and whatnot. So that, that's why I'm proud to be Hmong. So I've been playing with Witness for a little over 11 years now and became captain in my third year just by being consistent. I just showed up. I was hungry. I wanted to learn. I wanted to help out. I was always there. Everything set up, clean up everything, um, help chip in for jerseys, help chip in to coordinate uh, scrimmages, everything. And that's when, you know, the coaches and captains invited me to to be a captain. And I accepted and, and it was an honor. Um, it's one of the best things that I have uh been able to do uh, as a person. Back in um, 20, I think 2017, I was had the privilege of being able to play for uh, Minnesota semi-pro team. And in my first year, I was able to start a center and play a whole season. Um, I had a few injuries here and there, but um, it taught me a lot because um, even though I love competing and we play basically with a lot of former um, high school players and college players and my team had a lot of former college players on their team and and it was great but um, I realized too that not everyone was your your friend not everyone care about you especially on your team especially when you're losing the reason why modern flag football is important is because it it is huge in the Hmong community and I just remember um, the first time I heard about Monk flag football, flag football, man, that's that's soft. Like, you know, I want to play tackle football, you know, um, and I never really understood it, you know, I never understand it. And so um, until I saw it, until I experienced it, and it was like, dang, this is, you got to be tough. You got to play multiple games. You got to sit through the, the heat and the sun, and you got to, like, grind through so much adversity, um, especially against, um, you know, the other teams, and then play all those games in one day or two days is, is brutal. Monk flag football is even bigger now, you know, uh, with a new generation of, of uh, younger folks playing and, and competing and um, the coolest thing is just be able to go to a tournament and people you have never seen before, people you have never heard before from all different ages, they'll come out to you and say, hey, hey man, you, what team you play for? Oh, you play for Witness, right? Or, hey, man, like, man, you guys are big and tough. You guys are strong. Like, hey, or they don't, they don't even know me by name. I'm like, oh, okay. Hey, I, I don't know you, but hey, thank you. Appreciate appreciate the compliments, you know, and and it's just an amazing thing to feel to feel like you're seen and to feel like you're a celebrity, you know, in some sort of way in this sport, in this community. And it's pretty awesome, you know, and and I just never really got that anywhere else, you know. Um, and so I knew that what I'm doing in the sport itself is very valuable to the community. And so that's why Monk Flag Football um, uh, it's important, and that's why I play in modern flag football.
My favorite tournament has to be hands down Wassa. And it's just so many things about Wassa that you gotta love. Like, it's not too far of a travel from the, the cities. It's two and a half hours. It's a, it's a smaller tournament in a smaller city. And yet it's still competitive. The biggest thing with Wassa that I love is just being around the guys and being able to eat together, hang out together, mess around chit chat, tell stories, um, even spar a little bit boxing wise, uh, stuff like that and uh, and build those memories. It's always a great trip to go to so that's why Wasa is my favorite tournament. <laughs> we don't do that over here on Witness Football. <laughs> oh, oh. Come on, let's go! Get him! I mean, like, so are you like rapping? Are you singing? I do both. And DJ. I DJ too. You got an ad-lib? Like, like, like a family ad-lib? Cool! <laughs> <laughs> Not, not, not yet. Okay. Run, 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 run! Yes, sir, Poe. You about to throw a man. Yo, Poe, where's your last one? I'm him. He plugged his guy to you. I don't know if you if you mess with the EDM, Coach. Right, dog. Right, you know, right now. You know, my Wi-Fi. Shit, this guy there. You over there. What's your favorite genre? Oh, conversion! Favorite genre? Uh, two. R&B. Two for the win, yeah. one for the time. Let's like go. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a 90s R&B yes. person. 90s, hey. 2000s. Hey. I mean, then I go like 80s, 70s. Like R&B period, then I probably hit, hit, hit the rap, hip hop. Second day. Motion. Right on! Oh, too quick. Oh, too quick. Got two yards? It is, it is 35. 35. 35. Say hi. Oh, go, 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 This is supposed to be good, right? They were code blind. DB huh? hands? DB hands? That's why they're DBs and not receivers. Right. Because they're. Oh, uh, kick it. Kick, but they're supposed to do intercept. That's, so, that's just a plus. Oh, I see. So they have to just to bat it down. I see. And remember where the stick's at. Word. Long left. Yeah. All right. Ah! All right. Don't miss it. Don't get too too. Good. Give him a yard. We'll give him a yard. Three. Yeah. Yards. That's at least four. Yeah. Hey, y'all. Woo! Woo! Hey, I know we got four. Four? I'm not watching. I'm going to get you. Nah, I work at 530. All right. You know, you know my life. I do. My bad. How do you? You do it. Zoom it. Zoom it. Huh? Oh. There you go, Johnny. There you go, Johnny. There you go, Johnny. Oh, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, 
Come on, Lenny. <laughs> all right, I love the energy, I love the fun, but remember, hey, all the fun, all the energy here, we got to translate it to the game time, okay? Because mm -hmm. it can be fun in games. When, when, when the game's on the line, guess what? Now we're each other's throat, okay? Our attitudes are up, up here, okay? And we start hating on each other because what? You're not doing your job. Whereas I'm not looking at myself in the mirror. Am I doing my job?
guys. Sir, okay, this is what the defense this is what I've been talking about. All right, before halftime, what did I say, defense? Pick six. We get a pick six. All right. Okay. Sometimes you say you believe it. What? Who's that? Hope. Hope. Dream it, right? Come on. Yeah. Okay, okay. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. Sometimes things we talk about manifest because we believe in it. And do you believe in yourself and making that play every single time? I believe in you guys. That's why I would never say those kind of things if I didn't believe in you. Yes, sir. So believe in yourself because I believe. Coach Vi believes. Coach HD believes in you. I was born in Fresno, California. My family came over from Thailand. And when I was five years old, we took the long road trip to St. Paul, Minnesota. And we've been here ever since. Um, and, you know, I grew, I grew up on the east side. And there's a lot of Hmong folks on the east side, but also there's other race and ethnicities in the community. And, and that's the one thing I really appreciate was being able to have different friends from different walks of life, you know, um, and be able to go to their houses, eat food with them, play video games with them, hang out with them, play in the streets, uh, playing basketball and football in the streets with them, and 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 just and then go and play at the local rec center for basketball and football, and it allowed me to open my mind, open my heart to the folks of different ethnicities and realize that we have similar struggles, we have similar history in terms of uh, people and uh, our people having gone through oppression and still being oppressed. And so um, those are the key lessons I learned uh, just by growing up on the east side. And, and I'm, I'm, you know, proud east sider, even though I don't live on the east side anymore. Um, but yeah, that's where I grew up and I always take those lessons and those memories with me because they were their key to being who I am today.
got to dig down deep inside of us. Defense, you're first. Okay, what are we gonna do? We're gonna show up, just like we did the last series, or we're gonna we're gonna fold. Okay, that's gonna dictate how this game's gonna roll. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Okay, defense, you better dig deep down, deep deep inside, and figure out how you're gonna do this this next drive right here. Okay, overall win this game. Six six, real energy, but hey, this is we're bringing intensity up. This is it, guys. This is it. Next 20 minutes. This is it. Okay, this either. Either do it or go home. Okay? Go home. Go home. Let's go. We got to go home. Let's go. 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 let us go let us go let us go let us go Okay, opportunity was there, okay guys? Opportunity is there for us. Okay, not one, we all made our mistakes. Okay, collectively mistakes. Okay? And we gotta get deep down inside and say, hey look, what kind of what's the kind of team we are, what kind of player we are. Okay, it takes a lot of communication, it takes a lot of a lot of chemistry, okay? From the quarterback to the receivers to the defense, make sure we didn't hear any right teams and gaps and stuff like that, guys. Hey, we're better than this, guys. We get to the two yard line, we get over here, we get over the guys. We're moving the ball, guys. It's not like we're not. So do not let your head down. If you let your head down, say, hey, look, because we lost, guys, I believe that we won that game. We just didn't have enough time. It ain't the outcome we like, guys. It's not. It hurts. But collectively, guys, okay, we all made our mistakes. We all made, even coach, I made mistakes, Okay? okay? But at the same time, we saw big games. We saw big things happen this week for us. Okay? We allowed them to win this game. We allowed them to. We're better than this. We're way much better than this. Okay? Defensively, way to respond at times when we needed to. I say, hey, look, when we stop here, guess what? I believed in it. Offense, when we wanted to move it, we moved it all the way down. Okay? We got to buckle up. We got to focus on the little details from here on out. Okay? And I know that, hey, it hurts, guys. It hurts because we're right there. Every single time we get out here, we're right there. And it hurts. I wanted to sting, guys. I'd rather win, but guess what? Sting and let's get better from here. Don't let our heads down say, hey, look, man, my guy didn't do it. My guy, this guy didn't do it. We all did it, guys. Okay? And let's not start putting a blame game, but let's, how do we grow together? I heard someone say, hey, look, coach, every time we watch film together as a whole, we get defensive. <laughs> we get mad, guys. No. We're helping each other out. And guess what? We can't take criticism. As a family, guess what? 
We got to take the good and the bad. And how do we get past that? Getting past that is that, hey, receiving it and saying, hey, look, I got you. I'll do better next time. Or, hey, look, hey, man, hey, Norman, dude, how, how can I help you next time? Or how do we help each other? Sir? How do I help understand you? I grew a lot this week in getting to know some of you guys, okay, on a personal level, okay? But there an hour after 2 in the morning and I'm talking. No an hour to 11 o'clock here and I'm talking, one-on-one. These are great opportunities that, hey, we're growing, okay? That's why we get Airbnb. We invest all this time and energy to you guys as a whole, okay? So keep our head up, guys. Keep our head up. It should have been ours, and it hurts. All right? Bring it in. Let's go. Hey, win this loud and proud, okay? Loud and proud. Win this on three. One, two, three. Win it! Hey, we have 20 minutes. We have 20 minutes. Hey, three. Let's go. Okay. We six guys. When I first started with Witness, the hook that kept me go coming back to practice was um, Vi and, and James were very intentional about building a relationship, especially Vi at that time. And, you know, maybe he just needed a a fishing partner or, or whatnot. Um, but, you know, he will always uh, call me or message me, me and Chi specifically, uh, who is uh, a former pro player. A former captain and we would go fishing bass fishing and we would go buffet um we would do all those things you know and, and it was really awesome because i was a broke college student you know and i was um i didn't have a mentor growing up um i didn't especially a Hmong mentor i didn't have and i had an older brother but you know he was busy with other things and uh got in trouble and so uh, so it was really cool to just be able to, uh, at the time, just be able to do all these different things and not have to worry about driving or, or, or money or whatever. And, and uh, you know, Vi and James uh, took care of those things for me. And, and those things like were my formative, formative years um, as an adult, you know, uh, being 20, 21 years old, 22 years old. Uh, it, it, mean, it meant a lot to me, especially when I was struggling uh, just to make ends meet as a college student. So, um, yeah, uh, because of that, uh, those actions and the relationship built there, I, it really um, made me uh, really excited about Witness and about the team. I've been with the team for a little over 11 years. Um, and you know each summer each year um has the team has you know a certain persona or character and and certain makeup of folks and then i think this year 2023 has been um part one of the most talented team on paper for sure um but also a variety of folks on the team from different backgrounds you have you know some college players you have folks who who play high school you have some uh, and then even younger folks who were middle school or or ninth grade high schoolers um, who play flag football or tackle and so you have a variety of um guys on the team from all different ages and walks of life and 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 it's such an interesting uh, dynamic because you have mentorship across the board but for sure a very talented team a very hungry team you know a team that you know i feel like every time i ask new guys who, who come and join the team i'm just like they're always like yeah i tried out for this team and that team and you know i didn't really like their vibes or i didn't really like you know what was going on there but when i came here i feel accepted i feel welcome i feel cared for i feel like a brother or i feel like um you know that that i belong here and that's that's what we want you know and and the team you know we don't always win we don't always um be perfect in our games or or practice or whatever but um i think the best thing is that at least we always be brothers 
I decided to step down as captain um, after just um, a lot of comfort, a lot of thinking um, the last two years. Um, it's been really busy for me, especially as a coach. I'm coaching, I'm working, I'm you know, doing 12 plus hour days. Um, and I, I love it, it's my passion. And I just knew that um, you know, every year, every summer, I committed everything to witness. I'm, I try to make every practice, every meeting, every tournament, and um, and and I take pride in that. And and I wanted to give everything to witness, and I tried to. I and I think I I did my best, but I know that going to uh, next season that I just I just not able to do the do the same thing. Like I have been doing for the last 11 years, and and that's okay because life change, priority changes. But um, but I'm glad I'm still be able to be part of the team, still compete, still play. Um, you know, I'm I'm not retired. <laughs> I can still do it. Um, it just you know it's life. So you just have to adjust to it. So that's why I'm stepping down as captain because I know that as a captain, you know, uh, you gotta do your darnest for everyone. Um, you had to work endless hours on your own time uh, to get ready for practice, to get ready for tournaments, to get ready um, to uh, support the team in, in, uh, in any way possible. So I know that um, I couldn't do that anymore, so that's why I made the decision. But I know I'll still do my best to support uh, my teammates and my coaches. Yeah.